No, Matthew Thunhorse is going to get around him on the high side, more than likely coming off the corner. But Justin Bland's battling back as hard as he can. Oh, tough break. He's going to dive it on in there. He's going to try and do the slide job. Can he clear him? He's going to clear him with Thunhorse. Oh, he hits him. Contact. 65 in the wall. As so we have a great... But Thunhorse is going to clear him, and I think Thunhorse is going to be able to drive away from here on out. Justin's going to battle back hard. He's pushing that car as hard as he can right now. He's, he's almost there. He's, he's just getting too tight now. I think that right front damage is really going to start affecting his car. We're coming to white flag next time by. Oh, this is the white flag. This is the white flag. See, look at that. Yeah, we're on 150. I racing's a little bit slow here sometimes. Yeah. Know. As he's gonna try. Oh! Contact! It's gonna send a six around! And Colin. Oh, God! And, ooh! Oh, no! Oh, no! Colin Fern is not gonna make it to the start finish line. He is. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, Colin, Colin and Matthew are not happy there. Yeah, I don't blame them one bit. That was a That was a real bad move on that 65's car part. Oh, let's take one more look at it. Let's go back and watch it. I I got to say that was that was Well, he he, he was going for the win, but he was way back, and he just didn't... He never got off the gas, and... Well, it, if you look at it, he, he got loose. He really did. You can see it. And he tried to save it as best he could and keep it off of Matthew. I, I'm going to tell you right now, he, he didn't intentionally go in there with the the intent of wrecking Matthew. and. Oh, no, not at all. It's just he went in there with the intent of trying to win the race. And by trying to win the race... It yeah. It happens, and it, it's... It's going to make some guys upset, as it should. Um, it was a, it was just, a, we'll call it a questionable move on the last lap for the win. Yeah. It's a I tough, mean, it, tough call to make. Like, like we said, though, it, it is for the win, and there's there's a, a lot different mentality there when, when you try to go for the win. We're going to watch it one more time from the cockpit of this. I, I think you should watch it from the 14. We'll do that right after this, yeah. It's a... Yeah. It's a, it's a tough, tough break for a lot of guys. As Luis is, uh... Yeah, he, he did his, looks like he's already done his burnouts. Yeah, we're gonna run on board with Luis here. Yeah, you see the 65 dives it real hard in the corner. He's gonna get into the 6. They're gonna try and... Gosh. Yep. Yeah. At 14's your winner. Luis Salmaso, our favorite Brazilian redneck, is going to come out with the checker flag. Not the way he would have wanted, but... Uh, <sighs> that's, that's tough. And we're going we're gonna to get a word here with uh, our winner. Everyone's favorite Brazilian redneck. Uh, going to get him mic'd up here. Hey, Luis Salmaso, Jeremy Rubin in the ECR Hollywood Hotel. You got a copy, buddy? Yes, I do, buddy. Well, I want to say really good win, but it, it comes with... It, it, it's a tough way to win one, I want to say. Yeah, that was not what I was hoping that my first win would be. But I'm not going to lie, bud. I'll take it. Oh, I, I would too. I wouldn't lie about that either. Uh, you, you ran a pretty good race all day. Weren't never were the fastest car, but at the end you were able to be there in the right spot at the right time and avoid that that dive bomb move by the 65, and uh, you're able to come out on front. Yeah, we were looking at that. Like I was just watching, seeing oh something's gonna happen, but it was not something that I. Like, and they were talking on the radio. You could hear like. Pretty sure Justin didn't mean for that to happen or anything like that in particular. 
it was just he, he tried to give his best. They touched and they got called and it was right in front of me. So I just picked the lane. It was like days of thunder. Pick a lane that you think you can get through and just floor it. That's what I did. Yeah, uh, Nick, you have anything you want to add to uh, Luis? I, I gotta say, we watched you all race long. You know, there there were a couple moments where we thought, you know, you really didn't have the car. How how did you end up back up at the front like that at the end of the race? I know earlier you were well in the back. I'm just wondering how, what, what calls you guys made to get you up there. Now, it was I tried to pit early with a couple of guys because I knew tires, especially in the beginning of the race, I didn't want to spin out, I didn't want to lose control of the car, so I wanted to have tires under me that would allow me to run the lines. And midway through the whole thing, Iowa is a momentum track. So if you get into that zone and you hit the right marks and you figure out what is the best line for you to get, especially with the turbulence of guys in front of you, you're able to go fast. So I wasn't the fastest car by myself, by a long shot, even in practice. It was just one of those things. You fell into a groove. You you understand how the whole thing is moving. And you pretty much just try to follow the fast guys in front of you. And you get that line. And you get that speed. So that's what happened to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, congratulations again, Luis. Uh, you know, everyone's favorite Brazilian redneck right here. Yeah, yeah bud. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Yeah, congrats, Luis. Uh, we'll... Yep, one lap, but it was the most important one. Congratulations. Yep, congratulations on the win at Iowa Speedway. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And we do have one other person here in the booth, uh, one of our cohorts for uh, broadcast, Colin Fern. He was involved in that last lap wreck with the 6 and the uh, 65. Colin, uh, what was your take on what happened? Um... Obviously, I knew everyone was going to try to go up for everything. I know Matthew was uh, taking some time off after this race, and Justin trying to get that first win of the year. And I knew he was going to try to do everything he could, and I thought he was going to hold it down. And I tried squeaking through there, just did everything I could. But uh, like I said, I was just talking with my team. I said I would have taken third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. I, I would have taken anything in the top ten. And uh, to come home 15th is kind of awful. Yeah, I, I hear you there, bud. Um... Yeah, coming to P3, coming to the line, it's just, that's a tough break, especially going back to, uh, you finished P15. Um, yeah. I just got to thank everybody at Moist Motorsports. They all did a hell of a job, and uh, I'm happy that Luis got the win. I know he's been working really hard, and um, it's the first time I've seen somebody go from fourth to first in about 500 feet to go get the victory. <laughs> so <that's pretty> <laughs> we were noticing that, too. Uh, well, yeah, ran a good race, came back from a couple uh, incidents. Uh, Nick, you got anything you want to add to our uh, pal here? Uh, just, you know, feel bad for you, bud. Uh, didn't really work out for you. I, I feel like you had a good car. I saw that a couple times. You went from the back to the front. A any um, ideas on why you were able to go from the back to the front so often? I, I was I was doing um, everything I could. I, I was able to pass a lot on the bottom, which a lot of cars weren't able to do, and uh, I was really able to make that work for me. But that would only work for you know five or six laps, and then I had to go up to the racing groove and um, just try to duke it out with people there. And I know Luis and I had some good battles back there, and even John um, did a great job. We were all doing having a lot of fun out there, and I was able to make a lot of work. I know Matthew and I both went to the back to the front a few times, and unfortunately we didn't get the finishes I think we deserved. Yeah, well, we appreciate your comments, uh, Colin. Uh, tough break again. Uh, feel bad for you. Ran a good race. Ran a, had a really good fa fast car. One of the fastest out there tonight. Uh, bad luck there on the last lap. But uh, see you back next week. It's a tough week in the points, but we'll see you back next week here at Charlotte Motor Speedway next week. Awesome. Thank you, man. And uh, good luck tomorrow. And uh, before we get going here tonight, we, we actually want to get – all three of the guys involved in that incident. So right now we're gonna call down Matthew Thunhorse and we get his opinion on what happened. Hey Matthew, uh, Jeremy and Nick in the ECR Hollywood Hotel. You wanna you wanna go over that last lap there at all or? It's. <laughs> Uh, well, I just, uh, you want to basically just walk over to Justin and kind of strangle him real quick? Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, he's a cool kid, and I mean, it's not so much frustrating that, oh, how dare he pull a move, because, I mean, he just tried to put it in there. It's just more that I finally had a win, and it literally got snatched from my hands after I'd earned it. Oh, yeah. Earned it clean. Clean pass. It was a clean pass by you uh, going around that 65. He dive-bombed it into turn three, and it, it it didn't work out for anybody in the end, except for the 14 of Luis, who went from fourth to first in about 200 feet. <sighs> Yeah, I just hate it, you know. Justin had a strong car. I had a strong car until I was like an idiot and just got that speeding penalty and Colin was up there. And I mean, I can't fault him for racing his heart out. I mean, it's just frustrating that that had to happen to where a guy who, you know, wasn't a contender up there for the lead all night just kind of gets to steal it from all of us. And that's nothing from Luis. I mean, right place at the right time. Take a win when you can. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, real quick, Matthew, uh, you know, you had that speeding penalty early in the race. Uh, wh what happened there, and how exactly did you manage to overcome that and get yourself back in that position to battle for the win? I mean, you know, I just kind of made the turn down towards my pit stall right when the turn one kind of part of pit road starts, and I was going 41. All of a sudden, I see that pit road speeding penalty, and after that, it was just trying to struggle, and then I got in that incident with George where I had basically just took two tires to try to stay up there in the top 10 because it robbed me of a few spots and then we got that like green f or yellow flag around 120 and I took four tires and I was able to give them all hell up there and um just I just needed it to be one lap shorter and it would have been mine for sure you know it just sucks that it had to happen like that but no hard feelings against Justin so alright and that, that's great to hear that uh it's no hard feelings between you guys. Uh, you know, never want to see that carry over or anything. Uh, thank, thank you, Matthew. Uh, hope you get them next week at Charlotte. Uh, good luck. and uh, well, Yeah, good luck tomorrow, too, in the All-Star race. Well, that's the thing. This is going to be my last full-time race in Xfinity, so I was wanting to go for it all. Ah, I, see, I, had, I hadn't heard of that. Uh, well, then that, that's a shame. Uh, again, Good luck with the All-Star race tomorrow, then. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Yep. See you later, Matthew. And now uh, we're, we're going to bring the final member of that incident, uh, Justin Bland, who, you know, tried his hardest, but just didn't get the stick. Justin Bland. Welcome back to the ECR Hollywood Hotel. You know, thought we I was hoping we'd be bringing you back for a much different interview, but uh you know, it's not what we were hoping for. Take us through what happened on that final lap. I, mean, I don't even know where to start. I need to first start off and apologize to Matthew there. That was totally my fault. Um I shoot, it's just been so long since I've seen a victory here in ECR, so I was doing everything I could to try to get a run there in the final corner and I just dove it in too deep got the car sideways and caught his back bumper just ever so slightly it was enough to get him sideways so I mean my apologies out to everybody that got involved in that last wreck and congratulations to Luis for getting his first win in ECR and uh, it sucks that it had to happen like that I mean I hadn't hit the wall until lap 148 the entire race and ended up being the death of pretty much half the field so I mean not much I can say. What's happened's happened. So I hope we can move on. Hope there's no hard feelings between us and a couple other friends of mine that got caught up in that. And we'll just, I guess, see what happens. But man, it sucks. Yeah, and, and and I know there was a string of cautions there, right there at the end. I, I yeah, you know, we were sitting here saying, you, you got to be hating this. What what was it like being the leader for those last couple cautions? Uh, I mean, it was nice to be up front. Got to kind of just sit on it like, wow, I'm leading the race here this close to the end. I got a real shot. Um, it was kind of nice, too, that I didn't have to worry about fighting cars off behind me for that short amount of time. But I think in all honesty, that kind of hurt me. I had a 2.6 second lead right before that final string of caution. So if that hadn't come out, I think I may have it may have been a different outcome. But, I mean, what ifs isn't going to get you a win. It's what you actually make happen with the situation you're given. And... <laughs> What I was given, I ended up taking a lot of cars out. So, 
I mean, there's no better way for me to put it. I messed up a lot of cars. I messed up bad. So, I mean, it is what it is. We'll move on. We'll be back for the showdown tomorrow. Got a great car. Um, see what we can do with that. Hopefully, <laughs> tomorrow's interview will be a lot better if we can get one. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, you got anything you want to ask him? Yeah, just real quick. Um, I, I, I'm going to take the focus away from that last lap wreck. That was just, it was a bad, it was, yeah, <laughs> it was a bad mistake. But I do want to bring it back to lap 148 when you did hit the wall. Uh, did you get loose into the corner, or was it just trying to push it for everything it's got and uh, it ran out of track? It was just one of those things. I mean, that close to the end, I'm doing everything I can to try to get as much ground on the six as I could, and I just overdrove it, and the car would not come back to me through the whole corner. So I just pushed, pushed until I got in the wall, and I knew as soon as I got in the wall, I'd screwed up. I tried to jump to the bottom because that's where I'd been running one and two, but it was enough for Matthew to get around on my outside. So I mean. That one mistake cost me a whole race, pretty much. What really sucks, but I mean, it is what it is. Dang, tonight's just one of those nights you just want to forget, you know. Dang. Yeah, and I'm sure there's many other guys in this field that are gonna to want to forget tonight. But uh, you had a fast car, one of the fastest of the night. Uh, ending didn't end like we hoped, uh, but all around good race. Uh, hope to see you victory lane sometime soon, and see you tomorrow tonight on the showdown, getting into the. Sprint All-Star Race in the ECR Cup Series. 10-4, buddy. Thanks for uh, broadcasting tonight, guys. I'm looking forward to look back to it. may skip the last couple laps, but yeah. I love that, yeah. Yeah, we'll try and figure out how we're going to get it online so everyone can uh, rewatch it, and uh, we will uh, see you next week. Sounds uh, like a plan. Y'all yeah. have a good... Oh, what? Get, get, just want to say good luck, man. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good luck Bench, to both you guys. I'll be racing both y'all there. Eventually, we're going to get one of these uh, guyless flan motors into victory lane. One day. One day. Almost today, but just not meant to be, I guess. So, it is what it is. We'll get a good car tomorrow, hopefully, and see. Hopefully, we can just come back tomorrow. That would be ideal to just get rid of this one. I don't think we had a car finished on Scape tonight between the two of our teams. So, we need it. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, good luck, and uh, talk to you tomorrow. 10-4. Y'all have a good one. That was Justin Bland, and, uh, you know, wasn't the finish that we were expecting. Or hoping for. Or hoping for. But honestly, as, as bad of a finish as it can be when they wreck coming off to, to the final, uh, to the checkered flag, some, sometimes they're exciting. You know, you, you never know who's going to win when they do that. Yeah, it was exciting. I just... I hate it for all the guys involved. I hate it for uh, Colin Fern. I hate it for, especially Matthew Thunhorst, who was coming to the checkered flag. Can't really say bridesmaid because he finished P6, but uh, Justin Bland. Nope. As, as we usually see with accidents like this, the person who starts it usually finishes ahead of everybody else who was involved in it, as we see again with Justin yeah. Bland still getting a top five. Um, yeah, just a... It wasn't a bad race overall. We had a couple good green flag runs there for... 30 plus laps. Um, yeah, it was a it was an interesting race, interesting finish. Yeah, well, I, I know I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, you know, I'll starve event. Hopefully, we can get something in line for next week. Uh, we'll be able to broadcast from the Automotive Racing Authority Network. But if not, uh, we'll, we'll definitely see everyone back here at Dover. Uh, for ECR Xfinity. We're proud to do this. I had a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure, Jeremy, you did too. Just a great night, honestly. Yeah, one of my finest nights of uh, ECR. It's uh, fun to finally be able to get to do this uh, broadcast with... Uh, oh, maybe that fixed my mic problem right there. Um, <laughs> finally fun to get to do this broadcast. Been wanting to for a long time, so uh, it was fun to enjoy the time with you, Nick. Uh, We'll be out tomorrow for the ECR Sprint Cup Showdown. The race is going to start at 9... Bro broadcast will start, I believe it's 9.05 Eastern Time, 6.05 Pacific Time, right? I, I want to I wanna say it's actually about 9.15, but All I right. could be wrong. Well, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, if you guys are interested in watching, go over to twitch.tv slash emojicavs. I will post... Um, 
Yeah, I'll figure out how to do that. Chat. Yeah, figure out how to do that. <laughs> you can search for ECR uh, Elite Championship Racing Series on Twitch, and it should pop up with the Twitch.tv or search uh, Moist TV. Those are our broadcast partners with Colin Fern and John Bucher. Uh, for that, we're going to close it up for the night from Iowa Speedway. Nick, any closing remarks? Yeah, you know, come out watch us tomorrow. Uh, root on the number 9 Chanel Chevy SS and the number 34 Army SS. U.S. Army. Going for a, US Army, yeah. going for a win in one of these two heat races so we can get into the ACR Cup Series. Or the, sorry, the, the All-Star, All-Star race. All-Star race. That's the, oh, yeah. we'll, that's the world's we'll looking for. We'll see you. We'll see y'all hopefully, hopefully next week. Hopefully I'll be back next week. Uh, Jeremy's going to miss. Uh, but we'll definitely both be back for Dover. Uh, at that point, you know, we'll have a lot of fun. Hope to get to see you all. And uh, thank you for coming out and watching this one. It's been a blast. Yeah, for myself, Jeremy Rubin, my partner, Nick Eilis, this has been the Automotive Racing Authority Network here at Iowa Speedway for ECR Cup Series 2015. Thank you for watching, and we'll Xfinity. see you. God dang it. <laughs> Xfinity <laughs> Series. <laughs> we'll get used to it. We'll get stuff figured out for next week, get it better. Uh, we appreciate you watching, appreciate you following. We will see you next week. Have a nice night.